Chapter 29 Gabby was first to open her eyes. She looked around her and immediately felt the freshness of the fog enveloping the clearing. She sat up. Mum? She uttered quietly at first. Mum? She repeated a little louder now. What is it? Malou asked, raising herself on her elbows. Where's the house? She bolted upright. Where's Damianos' house? Upon hearing their mother's voice, Daniel and Stefano woke up. Where are we? Daniel asked. Still in the clearing, but I can't see Damianos' place. That's because of the fog, Stefano suggested. Why don't we go in that direction and find out if it's still there? He added, getting to his feet. This is the same clearing, but it's not in the same place, Gabby said. Look, she pointed in the direction of the jungle. The forest isn't there anymore. This is getting weirder by the minute, Daniel said, switching his gaze from where Hans and Gretel's house used to be to where the jungle was once. I suggest we stay put until someone tells us what to do, Malou said, looking upward to the sky. All she could see was a dome of white fog. They were suspended in time and place, it seemed. Unable to decide what the best course of action would be under the circumstances, Malou sat down again and so did the children. What does this all mean, Mum? Gabby asked, getting visibly frightened. Nothing, sweetheart. Just put your faith in God and he'll soon give us a sign or some indication as to what we should do next. As soon as Dan took the book out of its box, his heart began pounding rapidly into his chest. He was truly afraid of what he would find out. I think it's time for you to be alone with your future, Salangi said unexpectedly. You will need help. Please, Salangi, Dan pleaded suddenly as Salangi was about to get up. Don't leave. As you said, I will need help. Yes, Dan, but this old body of mine will not be able to assist in what you are about to do, so I better rejoin Damien and leave you in the care of someone who will be travelling with you. She stood up. Dan was stunned. What about you? He looked at Damienos. Where are you going? he asked, seeing that the old shepherd was leaving his seat too. I will follow your progress, Dan, and look after your family while you examine the options for your future. And who's that someone you mentioned just now, Salangi? Just open the book, Dan, and you'll soon find out. Salangi re replied already in the hallway. Staring at the two departing figures, Dan felt as alone as ever. As Salangi and Damianos had told him on many occasions, he was going to be the one to make the decisions that would change his future forever. Within a few minutes of being sitting down again, Malou and the children heard a faint whistle, similar to a breath of insistence wind filtering through the gap of a slightly opened window. What's that? Gabby blurted, nestling in her mother's arms. That's probably Damianos. Malou replied soothingly. Did you call? Damieno said, appearing before them with a broad smile on his face. Bet we did, you old buzzer, Daniel erupted as he got up. He was about to lunge a fist of frustration in Damieno's face when he was stopped short. The shepherd had extended his forearm and had stopped the young man in his belligerent assault. What the? Daniel blurted when he realised he couldn't advance a step. My dear Daniel, Damieno said calmly, you should learn to control that temper of yours. Attacking me will not bring you the desired effect, I assure you. Stefano grabbed his brother by the shoulders and pulled him back while their mother and sister stood up and gathered to face Damianos. "'Where are we, Damianos?' Malou asked, curious as ever. "'At the moment, nowhere in particular, milady. but I suspect it won't be long before we will begin following your husband in his travels.' "'What travels?' Stefano asked. "'I thought we were supposed to bring him back to 2013 once we found him.' "'That was the original plan, I agree,' Damianos replied. "'However, your dad chose to alter your future. And yours.' Alter his future? How? Malou demanded. But we were happy the way things were. Yes, you were, Malou, nevertheless, but, and as I explained on a couple of occasions, Dan came down to Key West to revisit his past, and although he could not change the fact that he opted not to take his Navy training, God is offering him an opportunity to alter his future, and yours in turn. So that's it, then, he's forcing us into a new life, Stefano remarked, showing his annoyance. No, Stefano, not a new life as much as a more exciting one. Why is that? Gabby asked. He's always seemed happy with whatever he did. Yes, to the onlooker, your dad was happy, but his regrets managed to supersede that happiness. He enjoyed doing new things, explore new business opportunities, yet he needed something else. But we've got a beautiful house, a lovely family, and we have no want for anything, Malou interposed. Yes, Malou and Dan has never failed to provide for his family. However, his desire to fly the skies, to stretch his wings, as it were, never died. But didn't you say that even God couldn't change the past? Daniel queried, having calmed down now. And I meant what I said, Daniel, yet there is always a possibility to alter the path you have chosen in order to attain the same result. How? Stefano asked, slightly baffled. Let's take an example. You, Stefano, have chosen to go to university and have chosen several courses to obtain your degree at the end of the road. 
Although you could not change the fact that you chose to go to university, you could opt to take other courses along the way to either become what you want to become or become something entirely different. The outcome, getting a degree, would not change, but the path you've chosen could be altered at any time, couldn't it? Yes, but once I got my degree, how could I go back and alter the courses? Once you've obtained a degree, Stefano, it's not the end of the road, but the beginning of another one, isn't it? You're not answering my question, Stefano argued. Oh, yes, I am. That degree of yours could be improved in many ways, couldn't it? Stefano nodded. Well, then, improving the results does not mean that you've changed your past, but you've altered your ultimate choices. It's like if I wanted to be a nurse, Gabby put in. And once I had my certificate, I went back to school, took different or improved courses to become a doctor. Is that what you mean? She looked up at a Damien S. So that means Dan is trying not to alter the path he had chosen originally, but he's also endeavouring to improve our future, is that it? Yes, Malu, that's exactly what he will be trying to do. Will he have help? Are Salangi and Damien going to help him do all that? Gabby asked. Absolutely, Damien S. replied. Although most of the assistance will come from someone you met already, Daniel. He fixed his eyes on the young man. You mean Gustavo? Precisely. God has put Gustavo in your dad's path by design, and the man is on his way to meet your dad at the beginning of his journey. What about us? What are we supposed to do in the meantime? Daniel asked. I believe, as I mentioned, that we will be asked to follow your father, yet at this point I would not be able to say for sure. That night, after Nicholas had left him to ponder the news he had brought him, Gustavo asked himself, I should have asked that old goat when I'm supposed to go. How am I supposed to get wherever Dan is right now? A question I am here to answer, a voice replied from behind him. Who are you? Gustavo uttered in disbelief, for the man who came round his chair to stand before him seemed to be surrounded of a strange aura. I'm Damien. Perhaps you remember our meeting at the beach and our lunch at the plaza. Of course, sir. I'm sorry, but I was lost in thought for a minute there. Have you got some news from Dan? Not exactly, Gustavo. Since you have accepted to accompany him, I am here to take you to Dan. The two of you have a journey to start. You mean right now? Gustavo sounded surprised. Is there a better time than the present? But what about my job? Don't I need to give notice or something? I don't think that will be necessary, Gustavo. These earthly concerns will be taken care of, not to worry. How? I was supposed to take a semi to Atlanta. Damien shook his head and smiled. Actually, you have been called away, and a phone call to someone who needed that job has accepted to replace you. He paused. I know it might be difficult for you to comprehend, but whenever a decision is made in heaven, an appropriate action ensues on earth. Isn't there a saying about that? Gustavo asked, trying to recall the old adage. Yes, I believe you meant man decides and God disposes. Is that the one? Exactly, Gustavo said, rising from the chair. So shall I follow you, or how does that work? You know how it works. You've already taken a trip to Iran, didn't you? Yes, yes, sorry, I'm not quite with it tonight. Okay then, shall we go? Gustavo nodded, and in the space of a second he landed in the living room of Salangi's old house. Good Lord, Dan exclaimed. Are you the one who's going to travel with me? I guess so, buddy. Gustavo looked around him. Gracious me, I've never seen that many books in one room before. Is this a library? No, it's Slangy's house. You remember Slangy, don't you? Yeah, and it's her husband who got me here, actually. Gustavo replied, going to sit down beside Dan. Did he say anything about my family? No, it was first Nicholas who came to me, to tell me that you were gone, and then he told me that I had a choice, and I could either stay put or go with you to alter your future, as he put it. And when I was asking myself when all that was likely to take place, Damien came to me and brought me here. All the while, Dan had been looking at his friend's profile, and why on earth did you accept to come with me? You had your future all traced out for you now, and you've got a job and you're not drinking. Hold it there, buddy, Gustavo cut in. I didn't know if I could make it on my own yet, and that's as straight an answer as you're going to get. I wasn't sure that I wasn't going to go back to the booze, truth be told. Too many unknowns, actually. But you could have stayed with Fabio. No, Dan, as Nicholas explained it, we were thrown in each other's paths because of God. He planned it all. So who am I to say the opposite of what the boss has decided, eh? Dan nodded and finally smiled. I'm happy that you're here, Gustavo. I think I couldn't have tackled this task on my own either. Gustavo looked down at the book in Dan's lap. What's that? Is that the book you mentioned when we met Damien and Slangy the first time? Yes, you see, Dan pointed to the title. It's the Twelve Herculean Tasks of the Shepherd, and it obtained twelve tasks mostly related to behaviour or character traits that were designed to help me in my future. But since I came back to my past again... Before I had time to use any of the things I saw or learned, I guess God has decided for me to open it again. Like a refresher course, you mean? I suppose so. Well, let's open it then, shall we? 